Now let's begin a question with effective versus nominal interest rates. Um, bank A pays 4% interest compounded annually on deposits, while Bank B pays 3.5% compounded daily. Based on the EAR, or effective percentage, which bank should you use? Now we know that the formula for the effective rate basically says, I'm uh, sorry, effective rate says one plus the nominal rate divided by M, which is the number of compoundings in one particular year to the power of M, all of that minus one. We'll be using this formula for, the, for this particular question. In the case of bank A, it's very, very simple because interest is compounded annually on deposits, which means that your nominal rate is the same as your effective rate. So that's going to be 4%. We don't need any further calculation there. But in the case of bank B, where you have a bank that pays 3.5% compounded daily. Now, daily means that your compounding is going to be 365 times during the course of the entire year. And so in this case, we're going to apply our formula. And so effective rate formula, using this one over here, we're going to plug in all of our values, where 1 plus our nominal rate of 3.5%, so 0 0.035, divided by 365, all of that to the power of 365, minus 1. Once you plug all of that into your calculator, you are going to get 0 0.0363, sorry, 3. 561, specifically 35618. And so that means that because you're compounding so many times throughout the course of the entire year, your effective rate is going to be slightly higher than what you were initially promised in the nominal rate. So that's 3.5618%. That's the answer to part A. And now if you look at part B, part B says, could your choice of banks be influenced by the fact that you might want to withdraw your funds during the year, as opposed to at the end of the year? Assume that your funds must be left on deposit during an entire compounding period in order to receive any interest. This means that for bank A, the entire compounding period is going to be one year. And for bank B, the entire compounding period is going to be one day. So there's a very, very big difference based on that assumption. Um, if the funds must be left on deposit until the end of the compounding period, that's one year for bank A and one day for bank B, and you think that there is a high probability that you will want to make a withdrawal during the year, then essentially bank B would be more preferable. But um, this assumption, just for clarity, is something that applied to banks a long time ago. Nowadays, because everything is so highly automated, whether you choose bank A or bank B, you will still receive the interest for the duration of your deposit. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment below if you have any further questions. Thank you.